Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, today's online Hudson Institute event. My name is Nate Sibley. Uh, I'm a fellow at Hudson Institute, and I run something called the Kleptocracy Initiative. Today, we're talking about uh, the daunting uh, task facing Argentina's new president, Javier Millet, as he works to reverse the country's economic collapse. Uh, to succeed, Millet will not only need to deliver on his radical economic policies, uh, but confront a legacy of corruption and impunity among, among Argentina's uh, political elite including uh, ongoing accusations concerning his predecessor, Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, who was recently sentenced to six years imprisonment for her part in a billion dollar public works fraud, though that is likely just at the tip of the iceberg. Uh, despite Millet's stated wish for closer US ties, Argentina also finds itself economically and financially dependent on China, a partner that's uh, traditionally tended to politicize uh, debt and exacerbate corruption risks uh, throughout its global engagements. And I'm delighted that um, we're having a bit of a rerun of an event we held uh, in 2021 today, uh, though hopefully under a bit more hopeful circumstances. And joining me uh, to discuss these the daunting challenges facing uh, Argentina's new president uh, is my Hudson uh, colleague, senior fellow Marshall Billingsley. Uh, he is a former U.S. Treasury Deputy Assistant Secretary for Terrorist Financing, as well as a former arms control envoy uh, and a senior Department of Defense official. Um, Maria Eugenia Tolerico, uh, the former vice president of Argentina's Financial Information Unit uh, and a founding member of Serra Justicia, uh, a, a civil society group that are promoting rule of law in Argentina. Uh, and she also recently ran uh, for the National Senate with the Together for Change uh, Coalition. Um, last but not least, Mariano Federici. He's uh, currently a senior managing director at K2 Integrity, but he's, all, he's the former president of Argentina's uh, Financial Information Unit. So it's great to uh, have you all back uh, to discuss um, what has happened since we last met, I suppose, and, and what um, happens next uh, in this great and interesting moment in Argentina's political history. Uh, Marshall, I thought um, I'd probably kick it over to you to start off and just any general reflections you have um, on the role of corruption and impunity in bringing Argentina where it is, uh, but also the challenges facing it now and, you know, what the opportunities might be as well. Now, thank you, Nate. <clears throat> and it's great to be uh online with two of my good friends. Um, very much appreciate uh, Maria Eugenia and, and Mariano, your willingness to uh, come on the program again and to talk about uh, how so much has changed uh, in the in the intervening two, three years since we last uh, spoke about this. Obviously, there has been a, a watershed moment in Argentina with the election of Javier Millet. Uh, he came as an outsider <clears throat> with um, really very little political infrastructure uh, to hold him up and has forged uh, an excellent relationship with you know, our, our collective friend, Patricia Bullrich, who is now serving as his uh, Minister of State Security. And that, that was an, really an outstanding appointment uh, for him to make. And he's come out swinging on all of the major issues that he talked about during the campaign. Uh, you know, one only has to watch videos of him wielding a chainsaw to recognize how serious uh, he he was and is about cutting uh, Argentina's bloated uh, bureaucratic system with the elimination of so many departments uh, and, and very deep spending cuts in a number of areas. He's taken the risky uh, step, but the essential step of allowing the peso to devalue. Uh, you know, it lost more than half its value in a single day, uh, which which obviously is is politically a very brave uh, thing to do, but also a necessary thing because taken together, his reforms have uh, allowed the IMF now to, I think, begin to unlock some of the funds uh, that will be necessary to get the economy back on track. He's he's also on the foreign policy front uh, proven very, very strong and outspoken. He obviously went to Davos and told the socialists at the World Economic Forum uh, exactly what he thought of their economic agenda. Um, he, uh, in fact, uh, President Ukrainian President Zelensky flew uh, his first time in Latin America. He flew to Buenos Aires for the inauguration, and they had a very warm uh, meeting there. And very recently, uh, the Argentinian president has been in Israel, uh, where he has condemned Hamas in no uncertain terms, and he's he's spoken about moving the Argentinian embassy to Jerusalem. So all very, very promising developments. 
but not everything is is rosy um as as one might expect and in particular i find the uh, the unwillingness to fully prosecute Christina Fernandez de Kirchner and her collective group of uh, kleptocrats uh, and his unwillingness to um, restore balance into Argentina's system, whereby autonomous independent agencies like the Financial Intelligence Unit or the WEF, which you, Mariano, led and which you, Maria Juena, were the number two, you know, you had prosecutorial authority, and that was stripped during the Kirchner uh, regime for for purpose for 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 a, for very specific reasons. They do not want anyone outside of the Justice Ministry being able to bring these criminal charges. So I'm hopeful that you both will talk a little bit about that. Many Americans will not be familiar uh, with the uh, accusatorial uh, prosecutorial system in Argentina, <clears throat> so I think it'd be very helpful to to walk us through that. So with all of that said, and again, it's great to see you. Uh, uh, I think you're 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 dialing in from Buenos Aires, Maria Eugenia. Um, would love to hear your thoughts, and then we'll turn to you, Mariana. Bueno, muchísimas gracias al al instituto, obviamente por interés. Thank you kindly. Thank you to the institute, of course. Thank you for your interest in the reality in Argentina. It's lovely to see you again, Marshall especially considering your support previously, as well as everything that's happening in Argentina at the moment. As you said, within or uh, through the elections, the triumph of Javier Milei has been a triumph. It's good news because it's also a presidency that's presenting liberal economic ideas and a new geopolitical alignment because clearly Javier Millet is showing his determination in terms of condemning Hamas as a terrorist organization, but he's also showing this alignment with the U.S. and Israel in, ge in the geopolitical senses. The progress of China under Kirchner's term that has now ended However, it continues because we were basically giving our country to through the presidency and that political faction, as well as through Sergio Massa, our country was being submitted to the interests of China, as well as through allies in the US that Sergio Massa had. The issues that we were facing uh, were also not being dealt with with the International Monetary Fund. As, as, therefore, I see this hope that we have with Javier Millet. He's going to need parliamentary support. That is his weakness, and he's going to need that for restructural reforms. A president can progress in certain terms, but structural changes come hand in hand with the Congress of the nation. And Javier Millet does not have all of that support. And so he has to create that parliamentary majority. From my point of view, this is made for some of the ministers and high, function, uh, high officials of the government. It has led them to be part to become part of this kleptocracy. And when I'm referring to this, I'm not referring to isolated matters of corruption, but a system that has based itself or completely settled in Argentina due to privilege, positions, and benefits that the government would, would give them, guaranteeing, yeah, guaranteeing privileges for people who do business through the Argentinian state. We can see this, we've seen this with the scandals through the, in the public works where large contractors have through their privileges and through the political class led to 
a very high level of corruption, which is something that kleptocracy or where kleptocracy runs rampant. For this reason, Javier Millet has made some decisions and he shared and expressed this in his presidential speech. Now he used specific terms. He referred to not looking or rather thinking of this impunity that's been rampant recently because these cases are before the courts and they are at the doors of being judged. There is a lot of resistance for this not to happen. There is a lot of opposition. And as the president has said, there is a minister that expressed himself saying that there was not going to be a judicial war. And the ministry, minister of justice said that no one would be prosecuted, referring specifically to the problems that involve Cristina Fernandez de Kirchner, as well as other grave judicial cases, such as entrepreneurs and the Argentinian unions, as well as Sergio Massa, who has a lot of power. There are a lot of people involved in that uh, structure of power as well. In terms of actions, in Argentina, they're talking about a reform of the Court of Justice. What he said in terms of the intelligence agencies that are able to prosecute in terms of financial matters, for example, Argentina has fulfilled a great role and has helped when it has come to cases of corruption or the corruption office. There have been threats saying that their power can be taken away. And so these, the suggestion of these measures are concerning. How great is that commitment, therefore? This kleptocracy continues and it is strong in Argentina. And that is a concern. Great, thank you. Um, Mariano, did you have anything to add at the opening here? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting us again to, to be part of this program. Thank you to the Hudson Institute, to you, Nate and Marshall, uh, uh, for, for your friendship as well. Um, me, you know, what I would add to this is that uh, corruption is really perhaps the uh, number one threat, not only to the integrity of our financial and economic system, um, to uh, the respect for the rule of law and the integrity to, of our institutions, but also to the integrity of our macroeconomic stability, the ability of Argentina to unleash its productive and, and economic potential uh, to grow uh, and 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 also a threat to our to our democratic system. Uh, we you know we we've heard in in recent uh, weeks uh, uh, the new government uh, speak a lot about the the the, the weight of the uh, tremendous inheritance that we've received from from you know the Kirchners once again. Um, and 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 speaking about the root causes of this problem and, and with a particular focus on the on the fiscal deficit as being you know the the main cause i would argue that the main cause even before the fiscal deficit is corruption the motivation for uh, corruption has has really influenced bad policies uh, in argentina distorted uh, policies and reforms that have of course led the Kirchner government uh, to, to increase the fiscal deficit, to mismanage the economy, because their main objective was to really in, in, enrich themselves rather than to focus on, on, on the good of the country. So, uh, you know, I, I think 
to uh, to to deal with the um, uh, with the underlying problems uh, that that Argentina faces, such as this one, is fundamental to correct uh, the, ver uh, the the bearing and also uh, you know to to ensure that that we finally establish a dissuasive a deterrence uh, to corruption that can prevent these uh, these these crimes from from continuing to happen at at least at the level. That have been happening, you know, we had a kleptocracy in Argentina. Um, so, because this is this this these are the type of threats that that limit and have been limiting uh, the potential of of Argentina, which has all the opportunities a country can wish for, uh, all the resources it can wish for, uh, you, you know, the the natural ones, the human ones, but has not been able to to you know to provide. Um, uh, you know, benefits to, to its population because it has been mismanaged by corrupt government for decades, uh, for almost a hundred years, I would argue. So, um, you know, it's a problem that needs to be, needs to be tackled. And, you know, we, we're all very um, optimistic. We're very enthusiastic when the government changed. I myself, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a passionate uh, believer and, and fighter for the ideas of freedom. Uh, nothing, you know, can be more enthusiastic to me than to have a, a president that 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 really understands and 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 believes and and promotes the ideas of freedom. Because I think Argentina can be not only uh, um, an example of of how to correct its own problems and and uh, you know unleash its own potential, but also uh, perhaps a uh, a, a light, you know, that can that can inspire other countries in the region that are being enslaved by the by the ideas of socialism and and the and the oppression that 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 socialist uh, um, you know ideology carries. So I'm very enthusiastic with that, but we have to we have to you know uh, understand and 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 perhaps enable the government also to understand that there is no true freedom without integrity. There is no true freedom where corruption uh, prevails, because corruption, you know, will will uh, will continue to prevent the government from achieving its own macroeconomic uh, and 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 social objectives as well. So I'll leave it at that for the opening remarks, and happy to delve into the the details. <laughs> well, thank you so much, all of you. I'm I'm hearing a much more cautiously optimistic but more optimistic um you know tone than perhaps uh, than uh, optimism uh, the first time around a couple of years ago um i want to pick up on something um that i think sort of maria maria Eugenia, that, that came out in your remarks was the, the need for sort of independence in the agencies uh and in the judiciary and how to, how to sort of cut the rot out of that's been installed there does um Millet have the powers as president um, to affect this. You mentioned, Miri, he doesn't quite because he also doesn't have the political support just now. What are the sort of practical steps? What are some of the agencies or, you know, the areas of the judiciary that he could act on, um, you know, without the political support in the parliament that he would need to sort of bring in broader reforms? Are there sort of short term steps he can he can take to start restoring some measure of independence uh, and accountability um, uh, there? And that can go to Maria, Eugenia, or Mariano. Um, whatever, I'd be interested to hear both your thoughts on that. Um, yeah, I think I think there are two uh, two issues here to that are worth highlighting. Um, you know, the fight against corruption has, of course, uh, a preventive aspect, and there's no better antidote <laughs> to corruption than you know to to uh, deregulate. Uh, reduce the size of the state, reduce the weight of the state all over the over over the uh, uh, the economy. Um, you know, simplify the regulatory system and framework. That that's a, it's been proven. It's been proven all over the world. You know, where you where you take the hands of the state away and and you unleash uh, freedom and and the and, and the potential of, of people to do business without interference. Uh, corruption, corruption is reduced. But the prevention and and this uh, uh, type of approaches are are forward looking, um, and and uh, you know they 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 do not 
um, address the problem of those that have already committed acts of corruption. And so the other face of the coin here is, you know, holding accountable those that have committed acts of serious corruption, of grand corruption, like the ones that Argentina has been has has experienced. Uh, there is no there is no um, effective fight against corruption, no effective deterrent against corruption. If you don't, uh, you know, if you don't bring those that have committed the acts of corruption to justice, if you don't ensure that they're subject to effective, proportionate, and dissuasive sanctions, and and this is where we are, this is where we're facing challenges here, you know, because of course it is a weak government from a political standpoint. It is trying to build coalitions and support to get its reform programs uh, across. Uh, and it's trying to, uh, you know, uh, 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 collect that support from from all political forces in the in the um, Argentine political spectrum. But there have to be limits to that, because you cannot enter deals with those that have sacked the Argentine state. You cannot enter deals with those that have to be held accountable to justice, and you cannot interfere in, in the judicial process. You know that is uh, been uh, already uh, uh, you know uh, put in motion to bring those that have uh, committed crimes to justice, and that's where I believe you know we 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 have um, a, a very strong difference of opinions with with the approach the government has has taken, because there are several cases related with uh, you know grand corruption, most of them affecting the Kirchners, of course that are, you know, where the investigative phase has been completed. And we did a lot with Maria Eugenia and with our team at the Financial Intelligence Unit to, to advance those investigations and ensure those investigations uh, were completed. Now, those cases have been elevated to trial. We're waiting for the trials to be held. We have been waiting for four or five years for those trials to be held. Unfortunately, the Kirchners came back in 2019 and you know, were able to interfere and delay the initiation of those trials over the last four years. Our expectations were, were that with the new government, you know, that interference would, uh, would, would, would finish and, uh, and that uh, the, the courts would be able to act freely in bringing those, uh, those uh, trials forward. So, um, we're talking about cases where most of the evidence, most of the evidence, because they're corruption and money laundering cases, right? So most of the evidence has been contributed by the specialized agencies that have these co-prosecutorial powers, the anti-corruption office in the corruption cases and the FIU in the money laundering cases. So now that evidence has to be upheld in trial. It has to be supported, defended, ar uh, articulated in trial. Uh, yes, there are prosecutors there uh, holding the accusations forward, but uh, they don't have the resources nor the technical expertise, and we're not the ones who provided the, the evidence. So if you withdraw the anti-corruption office and the FIU from those trials, you're basically weakening the accusations and benefiting the defense. It has a direct consequence on the uh, uh, impact of the, uh, or, or on the strength of the accusation. That's where we believe, uh, you know, that, that interference should not, um, you know, should not take place. We, we should allow these agencies to continue to play their role pursuant to the law, which allows them to, uh, to accuse, and uh, you know uh, these trials to be to be completed. Now, on the preventive side, uh, there are a lot of things the government can also do to strengthen the fight against corruption. You know, uh, for instance, law reforms uh, uh, agenda. The, the the sanctions against corruption uh, in in Argentina are very low. Uh, Christina Kirchner was convicted for corruption uh, last year. The main uh, the the highest sanction under the penal code for acts of corruption is six years in prison. Uh, that's a very low punishment for the, you know, the, the, it's not proportional to the damage uh, a kleptocracy can cause. Um, I think, you know, strengthening the autonomy of, of, of uh, control bodies is also 
uh, something that can be done on the preventive side. Um, inst instituting the civil forfeiture mechanisms. This was something that was tried during the, uh, the Macri administration, but we were not able to pass into law because most of the congressmen, particularly the Peronists and the Kirchnerists, were opposed to the civil forfeiture mechanism being used in money laundering cases derived from corruption. So, uh, you know, they were trying to, to, to protect themselves. Creating the beneficial ownership registry like the U.S. has done. It's also something that's, that's pending in, in, in Argentina. There are a lot of reforms related with the money laundering, anti-money laundering regime. We still haven't regulated crypto, uh, virtual assets, virtual asset service providers, for instance. Um, you know, uh, there, there, there are uh, uh, also a lot of things that can be done in terms of international uh, cooperation, entering into new agreements with, uh, with governments for sharing the uh the assets that are that are seized and confiscated uh whether in argentina belonging to to uh other victim states or abroad you know uh where argentina has aspirations to recover those assets asset recovery is now one of the main focuses at, at the fatf marshall which 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 you presided you know there is a lot argentina can do to improve its asset tracing asset seizure and asset recovery system so Many things that can be done on the preventive side as well, but but you know our main concern today and priority today is uh, that the courts can feel free and enabled to bring those cases forward, and the accusation remains strong with the uh, you know with the role of the control agencies upholding the evidence that they contributed against the corrupt. That's great, Maria. Did you have anything to add to that? Very comprehensive, so maybe not, but that's okay. Sí. <laughs> sí. Yes, I would like to, I would obviously like to uh, talk about his emphasis on the economic questions to deal with corruption. This is very clear when the government has more subsidies, more economic regulation in a country with so much co corruption. These are all, like we would say, boxes that allow for dirty money to be working in the country. And the leadership of the president Millet has not been seen yet. The problem that, has in, that we have in Argentina is that the kleptocracy has not been taken down. And this is because the public uh, prosecutors have not had uh, been able to work with other agencies, the anti-corruption agency or WEF. The, there has been an arc. These cases have been archived without being able to be prosecuted, because in a lot of cases the judicial authorities lack power. And we're now getting a big call for dollarization. And Argentina is now aligned with Iran, where a prosecutor has said that there was no crime. The mutual association Israel-Argentina has not, there, there, it was hard to get that case to even come before any court. Also with the K2 route of Krishner and her ability to wash money, to launder money. The finance unit had withdrawn from the process and our civil association was part of the process and that was what brought this case out of the archives. And so in Argentina, when we have more agencies that are acting, we can better guarantee the results of anti-corruption. And one book that was translated for the American, by the American Institute for Democracy talked about the embargoes and uh, customs embargoes. We have $6 billion that have been seized and just a couple of different cases of corruption. And these are a, a very, th these 
issues have a lot of economic sway. The people involved have a lot of economic power and they exert a lot of influence on the courts and that puts their cases in risk of further corruption. So the agencies that are overseeing these court cases, and we're going to see next week that the, with the case of Krishna, where she was given six years of uh, prison, and this isn't even completely confirmed yet. And the, the prosecutor is going to ask for 12 years. And she was also accused of hiding assets with Lopez Murphy because, but, but there wasn't, they didn't move forward with prose, prosecution in that case. And so she has gotten away with a lot of things because there hasn't been a prosecution in many of the cases that involve her. Then corruption has gotten its reach in all different parts of the state. And the lack of agency cooperation has weakened Argentina's ability to prosecute corruption. And we need to demand the end of impunity for Krishna. There, we'll see what this government is going to be able to do because they haven't gotten the political power that they wanted to do. To. And at the same time, the Congress will be able to perhaps increase the court ministers to have less interference, possible interference, and having more people who will be attentive to what's going on because the kleptocracy is very strong in Argentina and the ability to prosecute Krishna and Sergio Massa uh, because they are continuing to be active and there has to be a consensus on part of the government. And I say to the government that pay attention to who is looking for this consensus. Patricia Burgess and ex-president Mauricio Macri haven't had any kind of a fissure. They are also part of the initiative in parliament. And there's no question who is going to be the beneficiary of this uh, of what's going on in the courts, and we need to continue to fight against this blank slate for corruption in Argentina so that we prosecute the cases that have occurred. We need to work on uh, continuing to be vigilant a genuine investment and the basis of development are going to be affected. And we need the people who are responsible to be imprisoned and we need the money to be free, freed up so that we can use it in Argentina for the Argentine public. Thank you. So I'm hearing that there's still, you know, every, there are many avenues and opportunities to hold Kirchner and her, her ilk accountable uh, for the kleptocracy that's wrecked Argentina over the past couple of decades. Uh, but, you know, there are still some pretty formidable obstacles to doing so. In the meanwhile, Marshall, I would just wanted to turn to you. What role do you think the United States should be playing in supporting uh, the new president? Um, and if these these measures, um, domestic measures, don't go, don't go far enough towards holding Kirchner accountable, what, what tools do the United States have? Uh, to do so well i with with the election of Millet, i think a lot of options are now 
once again available for stronger and closer collaboration between the United States and Argentina. Uh, certainly that was just not possible uh, during the CFK regime because uh, we knew that uh, the Financial Intelligence Unit was being used for uh, to hound her political opponents, uh, not for the uh, the honorable purposes that that it was established and, and operated under the Macri government. So, depending on who leads the Financial Intelligence Unit, uh, my hope would be that uh, my former office, uh, in fact, they have a new acting assistant secretary as of this week. I, I would love to see her get down to Buenos Aires as soon as she can and uh, for the Treasury to begin once once again to furnish the kinds of lead information necessary both uh, for the investigations of corruption in Argentina, but also lead information uh, on, on to help with the asset tracing and asset recovery effort. Because, of course, Kirchner has stashed billions overseas. Uh, and has moved that money through the international financial system to places like the Vatican Bank and to other places. Uh, and and that needs we we need to see that money hunted down and returned to the Argentinian people. Further, um, once again, Argentina now is is closely aligned with Washington on the matter of terrorism and on the matter of state sponsored sponsored terrorism, particularly Iran. Just a few weeks into the job, Patricia Bullrich, who I mentioned is the Minister for State Security, uh, led the arrest of, of a terror cell that had flown into the country and was staying at a hotel just two blocks away from the Israeli embassy. Uh, so this continues to be a threat that faces uh, Argentina and the Argentinian people. And prosecution of the Iranians uh, complicit in uh in both the bombings, the Hezbollah operatives, but uh, as well as the assassination of Nisman, the prosecutor, uh, on the night before uh, he, he was going to trial. Uh, these are all things that the U.S. can and should help with, particularly if Millet intends to, uh, and I hope he will, add Hamas as a listed terror organization under Argentinian law. Uh, what I what I would finally say is that I, I really do find it incomprehensible that the United States Treasury, knowing everything that I know they know regarding Christina Fernandez de Kirchner and her corruption, has failed to uh, use the Global Magnitsky Act to sanction her when they have felt free to sanction other uh, vice presidents, for instance, the, the, the current vice president in Paraguay at the time of the sanctions. So they'll use the tool when it comes to conservatives who are engaged in corruption. But when it comes to fellow traveler socialists, they don't seem as willing to actually employ the statute. But make no mistake about it, the, the that Magnitsky Act was designed, the corruption prong of those sanctions was designed for particularly this situation to ensure that Kirchner and her fellow, fellow uh, corruptionists do not receive the impunity that, unfortunately, it seems they have been granted by Millet because of his weakened political state. Thank you so much. So that was hey, too can long. I? Of course, yeah, please. No, if if if, uh, if I uh, can please react to the, this last statement from uh, Marshall because I think I think it's important to uh, emphasize how uh, the. Um, uh, corruption of the Kirchners, the kleptocracy of the Kirchners, has also, in addition to representing a threat to Argentina's ability to grow and, and develop, has also represented a threat to the United States, the integrity of its financial system, and to its national security as well. We had cases that we worked together jointly in cooperation with the U.S. authorities that proved this. And just as you know, Marshall, because we worked together in partnership uh, during our, our times in office uh, on, on these cases. Uh, you know, there were uh, hundreds of millions of dollars laundered from Argentina's corruption in, in the United States. Uh, uh, shell companies uh, established in the United States that were used as vehicles also to launder money uh, overseas. U.S. financial institutions that were abused, uh, you know, by 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 the kleptocrats and uh, through through money laundering schemes. So, um, you know, we're talking about a criminal organization here that has not only compromised the integrity of our financial system and our economy in in, in Argentina, but has also affected 
global financial integrity and particularly the integrity of the uh, of the U.S. financial system. That's why you know I, I also want to commend the, uh, the 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 petitions that Senators Cruz, for instance, or Senator Rich, Senator Scott, Senator Haggerty, Senator uh, Cor Cornyn, and and Senator Rubio have made to the current uh, administration in the United States, you know, urging them to take immediate steps uh, to use the tools available. You mentioned the Global Magnitsky Act, but also, you know, if, if they wanted to take a previous step uh, 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 under Presidential Proclamation 7750 and Section 7031C of the uh, Department of State Foreign Operations and Related Programs Appropriation Act, you know, they could hold the Kirchner and her family members accountable for their involvement in the significant acts of corruption, at least by withdrawing their ability to enter U.S. territory. And that has not been done yet. And it's usually a first step that's applied before the Treasury sanctions uh, uh, come into force, just like, like, you know, you mentioned we saw in Paraguay, in, uh, in Guatemala, and, uh, and, and, and in other cases. So I think... Um, um, you know, this this would be a, a very reasonable uh, proportion and also dissuasive uh, measure to take to uh, not only send a clear message to, to Argentina about the importance that the United States assigned uh, allocates to the fight against corruption, but also an important message to other corrupt leaders in, in the world, you know, that no matter your ideology, no matter what side of the political spectrum you come from, not only the right, uh, but also those uh, that are associated with the socialist ideas will get sanctioned and will be get uh, prevented from, from abusing the U.S. Uh, financial, economic, and, and democratic system. Yeah, that's fantastic. There's obviously lots the U.S. can do to support that. Um, that's, you know, we're coming towards the end of the, the session now, but I, I wanted to ask some, um, something that's sort of jumped out at me as I was, I was reading up before the event, and that's the extent to which Argentina has become economically and financially dependent on China. Um, and China is a country, um, you know, even joining its Belt and Road Initiative and so on. China is a country that, you know, when you get financially and economically entangled with it, um, you know, corruption uh, and governance problems follow pretty soon after. We've seen that in every Belt and Road country around the world. Every Belt and Road deal that I've ever come across includes like secret uh, you know, secrecy clauses, so you never know who's getting what out of the deal and so on and so forth. Um, so as as the new president contemplates closer ties with the US, how do you see him navigating that relationship with China um, to reduce dependence uh, and, you know, the, the attendant problems that may come along with that? Um, and I'll throw that open to any of you. Rapidamente, perhaps... Um... I believe that um, that link is going to be delayed with China and Argentina. Commercial businesses in Argentina has even started to be paid in chance. Strategic resources and the plants that China used to uh, or China was planning to introduced in Argentina. In addition, their currency was, was starting to be used. Argentina was looking towards China even with uh, after signing the Silk Road Agreement. I believe there's going to be a backward process in terms of, uh, you know, all this progress we've made, but I believe entirely in Javier Millet and his presidency, I believe many problems can be solved through uh, these, these new allies. I would also like to add, and now referring to the point we made earlier, the kleptocracy and for it to be linked to, to the Magnitsky Act that you were referring to, that, that threat that Argentina faced 
in terms of its connections with Iraq and Bolivia. A couple of weeks ago, it was revealed that some uh, uh, officials are still part of the government that shouldn't be. And one official was was seen. It was a Venezuelan official. That's right, a Venezuelan official. So what happened? The camouflage, a camouflage was given to him by the Venezuelan government. And Mariano, please correct me if I'm wrong, but he was kidnapped at an airport in Argentina in an area of maximum security while an American official was trying to get this airplane back to the US. He was photographed by another member of the Argentinian embassy who was with the NAC, who went with this diplomat to take pictures and record the moments in which this was happening with the airplane. This airplane was ordered by the US and this had been ignored, uh, rather had been hidden away while Fernandez de Kirchner was president. And so beyond an issue of corruption and Kirchner and this entire system she created, it's really a matter of national security for the US that for people that support Kirchner continue to remain active in politics because opening the doors of Argentina to introduce Venezuela, Iran, and the camouflage of relations with Russia, let's not forget that Alberto Fernandez was offering Russia just a couple of days before the war, and it's almost two years since the war, was opening the doors to Latin America, to Russia. And so Kirchnerism also means not only an issue to social and financial integrity, but also national security. That's also also under uh, the bullseye, so to speak. And this affects all countries in the world. So thank you. If I can add uh, just two, two comments on that. Uh, well, first of all, fresh news from today. The plane has landed in Miami today. So uh, it, it has finally made its way to the United States, which is great news. And, uh, and I think it's, it's, it's an important accomplishment of all those that have you know, really been uh, uh, trying to, to fight the, uh, the, you know, the removal of this plane from the Venezuelan Iranian hand. And among them, Maria Eugenia, uh, uh, Ricardo Lopez Murphy and, and Patricia Bullrich, who you know uh, uh, acted before the Argentine judiciary to to enable this uh, to to happen? So so congratulations for that. But also uh, on the point of China, I, I so I'd you like know, to say that. Espero you know, tu reconocimiento, Federici. <laughs> <laughs> Ricardo López Murphy. Gerardo. I am one of them. I I appreciate that you're recognizing me, and we ran out when this plane landed in Argentina and then we came back to fight and I wanted some little credit for that. Uh, that you, are, you were among the those that pushed for this uh, to happen. So so congratulations. And I I you know going back to the issue of China, I think it's important to note you know, Argentina has very important strategic resources that are, you know, uh, that, that that China has an interest in. in. We have the second largest reserve of, of, of shale oil in the world, third largest reserves of shale gas in the world, uh, huge reserves of, of uh, drinkable water, uh, agricultural reserves, also the mining, the lithium, of course, uh, also reserves uh, of, of natural resources in our seas, in the South Atlantic. Uh, which, as we all know, are uh, you know uh, uh, depredated by uh, a Chinese fleet of over 700 boats that comes every year uh, to fish illegally in, in in our waters. And I want to commend you know the the work that in in these last two months uh, the the new government has been doing in this regard, 
uh, not only Patricia Woolrich, but also uh, Minister of Defense uh, Luis Petri, a good, good, very good friends of our and and of the United States, who have you know been been, been trying to put up the fight against uh, uh, this this illegal and, and abusive uh, actions of the of the Chinese uh, um, fleet, supported of course by the Chinese government and its resources uh, to depredate our seas, which which causes not only you know, uh, damage to to our resource, potential risks uh, to our to our security as well, but also risk to the to the environment. <laughs> For those that really care about the environment, here you have a threat to the environment. You know, uh, uh, of uh, Chinese uh, actors depredating our seas in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, over 35 ports in Latin America under control of Chinese companies uh, 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 related with with the government. You know, this is a major, major problem that uh, I think needs to be needs, needs to be addressed. Bearing in mind that whenever China, you know, approaches and offers something uh, attractive in terms of economic, financial deals, commercial deals, there is always a strategic interest, a geopolitical interest for them uh, behind. Particularly when those offers take place in the Western Hemisphere. Thank you so much. We're, we're right, coming right up to time now. Um, I just want to thank you all for, for joining us. Unless anyone has any sort of further burning points they want to make or, or thoughts sort of popped up, uh, I think we should probably leave it there. But there's so much to digest, so much to think about. Uh, I'm glad that we have a much more optimistic, uh, cautiously optimistic, as I said, uh, tone this time. I hope we can reconvene in two years' time uh, to consider um, you know, Argentina as a success story in the global fight against corruption and impunity. So, Mario, thank you so much. Marshall, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and special thanks, Maria Eugenia. We know you sort of fight the good fight on the ground there. So often, you know, a personal risk perhaps in, in Buenos Aires. Um, so with that, I think I think we'll leave it until until next time. Thank you.